Hi, English teachers. Let's talk about sequencing activities in your lesson plan. In order to achieve your objectives, you should have a lesson plan that scaffolds students' learning step by step. It isn't enough to have developmentally appropriate activities for young learners planned. The order or sequence of your activities is also very important. You should look at the activities in your textbook as well as other activities you create yourself and put them in an effective order. The following are some simple lesson planning rules that can be helpful for you to sequence your activities. You should present new language through listening or reading texts and check comprehension before asking students to practice it. You should encourage students to use receptive tasks like listening and reading before you ask students to complete productive tasks like speaking and writing. You should provide controlled or guided practice exercises before you ask students to produce new language independently. Young learners need some practice before they can do a freer, more communicative activity. There are different ways to set up a lesson. However, some lesson plans have six steps that look similar to this. Six step lesson. One, warm up. Two, presentation. Three, practice. Four, application. Five, wrap up, assessment. Six, follow up. You can refer to the lesson plan template attached to the video script. One, warm up. In the warm up step, the teacher starts the lesson with activities that create interest and excitement for the lesson, link the day's lesson with previous lessons, and activate background knowledge about the content and the new language. If the lesson is about family, you might show students a picture of a family and ask what they see. What do you see in this picture? Okay, Bianca. Two, presentation. In the presentation step, the teacher presents the relevant vocabulary and language structures in a meaningful context, like a story or a song, and checks comprehension. Usually, this input is presented through listening or reading. You could present the language using a picture of your family. This is my mother. She is kind. This is my father. He is kind. This is my brother. He is tall. This is my sister. She is smart. Three, practice. In the practice step, the teacher gives students the opportunity to practice new language through controlled activities, such as fill in the blank, reordering a story through picture cards, or even reading a story out loud with the teacher. Students practice using new language in predictable ways through post-listening or post-reading activities that include speaking and writing. In order to practice, you can give students labels with the family member and ask them to take turns putting the right label on the picture and say the name out loud. This is a controlled way for students to practice saying the name of the family members. Four, application. In the application step, the teacher gives the students the opportunity to practice new language through free or independent activities. 
For young learners, some activities could be role playing or projects that encourage students to communicate something that is meaningful to them. Application activities almost always involve speaking or writing. In the application step, the teacher can ask students to draw their family and get ready to present their family to the class. Five, wrap up assessment. In the wrap up or assessment step, the teacher presents a final activity that reviews what was learned in class and assesses if learners have achieved the lesson objective. Sometimes teachers use a technique called exit ticket. This is always the last activity that students need to complete in order to exit the classroom. It could be one question or handing in the last activity to the teacher. For the family lesson, the teacher could ask students to present their pictures to the class and say their family members out loud. They can hand in their picture before they leave class. Six, follow-up. Follow-up could be homework or a plan for connecting today's lesson to the next lesson. Maybe your objective was students will be able to talk about their family and the follow-up could be a project to make a poster with photos of their family members. You can encourage them to include any pets they have because the next unit is about animals. This lesson plan structure will encourage you to present new language through receptive tasks, such as listening and speaking, before asking students to produce speaking or writing tasks. In addition, it provides more controlled production activities before giving students a chance to produce more independently. This is how we scaffold language learning for young learners through our lesson planning. You may have a different type of lesson plan structure in your school, but you can still try to plan your lessons using these simple rules. Happy planning!